Hi everybody, something a bit different again. As I say, I don't know why, but I feel in a talkative mood tonight. I thought we'd have a look at some testing equipment or voltmeters. Here we have a range from a from going back many many years. The one on the left is the oldest through to the relatively modern digital type meter. They all do the same thing, indicate that there's a voltage. Initially that's what they do. They can be arranged to measure voltage or current. There's in fact the same movement, it's just wired up differently using shunts and multipliers. Shunts go across the movement and that is generally for measuring current while multipliers which are resistances go in series with the meter and they register voltage. Now let's have a look at the first one we got here. This is a little item which I was lucky enough to pick up at my favourite boot cell. I think I'm trying to get to see what's actually on it, which I think is a bit interesting. Let's get the old light over there and have a little look. See these things and pick them up. And invariably, I get them. People don't seem to know what they are. And because of that, they haven't a clue what they're worth. I normally get them for a song. Anyhow, this is what's known as a galvanometer. A galvanometer was named after an Italian who, as you know, experimented with dead frogs. And when he touched them with a scalpel, or rather there was two dissimilar metals, the frogs' limbs moved. The, fr the, the, the frogs were not... A, alive they were completely dead but the effect of the frog it, it had produced like a battery he didn't know what it was he called it galvanic electricity and the name galvani goes for the galvanometer galvanizing where zinc is coated on to iron and it's all attributed to Luigi Galvani and his frogs. The idea was later taken up by Countess Sandra Volta, who was a count and a very, very wealthy man. And he made what is known as the voltaic pile, which is the first battery. He used layers of zinc and copper, once again two dissimilar metals separated by cardboard, soaked in brine, salt solution and these were piled one on top of the other called a pile which the French still still use the same word and it was the first battery and that produced DC. Anyhow, end of the history lesson. Here, as I say, we have a galvanometer. Now, if I put it down straight and I put a magnet near it you'll see it moves it is in fact a compass pointer all it is is a compass pointer pivoted and if I turn this it will stay in the same place you will obviously be attracted to the magnetic north What you would do, you'd set it to zero. Remember, this is a very early form of voltmeter. Set it to zero, and depending on which way the electric is connected to it, the, the needle will either deflect to the right or the left. 
this is why it starts with zero goes to 90 that way and 90 the other way they're probably not in volts because these were merely a means of detecting whether there was a voltage and polarity DC again look at the back of it all it consists of you've got your your terminals or binding posts whatever you like to call them which connect to silk covered wire wrapped round a soft iron former just wrapped round 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 many many turns and that's all it is as the current passes through an electromagnet is set up with the north and south depending which way round it is now this north and south acts on the magnetic needle and depending on which way it's connected the needle will be deflected either one way or the other this phenomena was discovered by a Mr. Ersted a, a wire carrying a current deflected a needle a magnetic needle and that was Ersted He set a law up as well, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to bore, bore you too much with the history. That's what we're seeing there. Right, we'll leave this one. The next one we come on to. This is possibly 1930s, 40s, could even be 50s. Manufactured by a company called PIFCO. PIFCO all in one. It was an early attempt at making what we would now call a multimeter or in England an AVO the AVO meter was, was a very popular meter some years ago particularly an AVO 7 which you can pick up at boot sales funnily enough I picked one up on Saturday for four pounds and don't laugh the per I was pointed out I said see you have to be very careful if you make out you know too much about it the price goes up so I said um, oh that thing there how much is it she said oh that radio so I kept quiet I said yeah that thing there said I called over to someone that ah oh, four pounds thank you I'll have that once I paid my money I let them know that it certainly wasn't a radio it was in fact a multimeter anyhow that's that little anecdote over. Let's turn it over. There was writing on the back, but age has taken it away. Basically, what it does, it tests volts, milliamps. So you've got a voltmeter and a ammeter on the same movement but controlled by shunts and multipliers. It's also got a very early circuit which you would use with a battery which was possibly an internal battery in there 1.5 battery and if you look at the middle one there it's got valve and circuit tests well that ages it and the idea of that would be to test for continuity Valve heaters, the very early valves, had a tendency to burn out. The original valves were like a filament of, of a bulb and they glowed very bright. The modern valves, if you can say modern valves, were called dull emitter and they had a thoriated coating to make them e emit more electrons and they would occasionally burn out and by using the valve and circuit test you would connect the valve heater circuit in series with this if you got a reading the valve was okay if you didn't the valve was binned so you can see there we got a very early form 
of multimeter. You've got your mains voltage there, 240 for use over here. You've got 8 volts. That would be possibly used to test a car battery because in those days cars were invariably 6 volt, not 12. And the various probes were connected to give you different functions. Anyway, I'll leave that one. We're getting a little bit more up to date. Here we have a more familiar multimeter. I do apologise, some of the figures have bleached out. It's quite an old one. This is made by Sandwell Electric Instrument Company Limited. It's Japanese. Now, unlike the first two, which used what they call a moving iron pointer, this one uses a moving coil. Um, yeah, I did mention that. Yes, right. I thought I hadn't mentioned that. Use the moving coil, which means there is a coil attached to the actual pointer. As the pointer goes round, the coil also moves round because it's fixed to it between the poles of a magnet. The current goes into it via a pair of hair springs. So you can connect it with it and get continuity at the same time because the hair springs obviously move but they are ways to connect to the coil. It's pivoted and the hair springs also act to bring the pointer back so it's under a little bit of spring tension. You have an adjuster screw there to get it on zero. This one has also got a mirror screen. That's called a mirror screen so you'd line your pointer up directly above it to get the accurate meter, the accurate reading. Here most of your different functions are put onto a switch. And as you can see you've got AC volts thousand through to 50 volts a little bit not very clear 100 volts you've got a DB reading which is to do with noise obviously I won't go into that at the bottom you've got a milliamp scale you want ohm scale for measuring resistances I do beg your pardon this is the DC volt scale this is the DC volt scale 1000 dropping down to very small amounts unfortunately some of the figures have worn off and your ohm scale is at the top this meter also has an internal battery and there's your readings for your ohms. The first one is just a straight ohm reading. Then you multiply the scale by 10, by 100, and by 1000 or 1k. And by turning the handle or knob, you can set to the different things. So we're getting more up to date. These meters you can still buy, or the modern ones you can still buy. Funny enough, I prefer these because I know, I know exactly what I'm doing and I don't get confused. With the modern digital, I tend to get confused. For a start, these have a battery inside to drive the whole mechanism or the solid state. Turn the, the meter on and you immediately get a reading zero. This one's actually set HV high volts. They're made much easier really when you think. You've got your high volts. Each time you turn you change it to a different function. 
we've still got several different output leads which you'd plug into like the other one that had the three and this one's got three each one has a different purpose the 10 amp DC this one the middle ones for your volts ohms and the common one is shared between the the other two so it's a case of checking you're on you're plugged into the right socket if you're not it's fused there is a fuse a 0.2 amp max fused so if you do put it in wrong that will blow and the meter will be saved that's your your volts with a little AC symbol so that's volts AC down here you've got your amps straight line so that's DC 200 microamps 2000 microamps 20, 20 milliamps 200 milliamps quite low readings that one there is 10 amps so you turn the switch to that one goes around there and that would be set to read up to 10 amps using the top connector and the common and that is DC likewise all the way around various other things this is your volt reading on DC and below that your ohm readings 20k 2000 that's the ohms reading these other bits and bobs are for testing transistors you put your transistor leads in depending whether it's an NPN or a PNP nowadays they're mainly NPN in my day they were germanium some of you might remember the OC OC 44s um, the GT numbers GT 114 I believe OC 171 that was one of the first high frequency transistors I was able to make my little VHF tuner up some of you out there will remember that it was a, a little circuit sold by Henry's Radio at the Tottenham Court Road anyhow I waft on to other things which I shouldn't anyhow that completes my little talk about meters um, as I say any questions please ask any mistakes I've made please shout um, and I hope it's been of interest as I say, I just felt like a bit of a waffle tonight, and um, I'm afraid you got it. <laughs> so, once again, thanks for looking. Any questions, please ask. Any comments, please leave. And please subscribe. Thank you again for watching. Thank you.